Good morning and welcome to this Monday Minutes, a beautiful day. The last several weeks we've talked about the Word of God, the foundation of our faith. And today I want to get into the first chapter of the book that we've been going through, The Life of the Believer. If you'd like a copy of this book, uh, please contact me and for a small fee, I'll get you one. Um, but today I want to get into the first chapter. And the first chapter is, why am I here? That's a very important question. People have asked that question for millennia. Why am I here? Do I, is there a purpose in my life? Well, the Bible answers that question in a resounding, yes, you have a purpose. See, God created you. God breathed into you the breath of life, and you became a living being. And God created you for a purpose. He created you unique with a unique personality because God has an infinite capacity uh, for love. And he wanted people to have a relationship with. And he wanted people who were different. He didn't want uh, cookie cutters. He wanted uh, people with unique personalities so that he could have relationship with you. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 6, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. See, God wanted people he could express his love to. So he created you for relationship. And so that you have that relationship with him and come in, can come into relationship with him, he made you in his image. Have you ever wondered what that meant? In Genesis 1.27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, we think of image and we think of a, a representation of something like a photograph is an image of me if it's a picture of me. And often we think of image that we look like God. That, that may be the case physically, but I think it goes so much deeper than that. Uh, we are created like God because God has free will. God gave us free will. He gave us ability to choose. We are created in the image of God because God is creative. He has a, an unlimited amount of creativity, and he shared that creativity with us. You look around, and you see the all the things that God has, that man has made, and I think of Legos as a great example of our creativity and imagination, and, and we have that imagination and that creativity, but also we are made like God, and that God is three in one. He is three persons in one being, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we're not three persons in one. We're not schizophrenic, but um, we are created with three parts. It says in Genesis 2, 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And we see the three parts of man there, the dust of the ground, our physical bodies, this, this tent that carries who we are, our essence. God breathed into man the breath of life, that spirit. And God gave us a spirit. See, we're unique in all of God's creation in that God never breathed the breath of life into any of the animals. He only breathed the breath of life into mankind. And when he breathed into us, he gave us an eternal spirit. The Bible says that in order to worship God, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. You, you must be a spiritual being to come into relationship with a spiritual God. And so God gave us a spirit. And it says, and man became a living soul. That living soul is our, our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, our personality, who we are, and that formed from the combination of the spirit and the flesh. And um, so we are a body, a soul, and a spirit. God made us like him so that we could relate to him. And so the primary purpose we have in this life is relationship with God. That's why God sent Jesus to this earth. That's why God has worked with mankind all these years, because he wants a relationship with each one of us. And if you don't have a relationship with God, I encourage you, accept Jesus Christ into your life. Uh, pray what we call the sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I invite you to come and take control of my life. I want to live for you. And you pray a prayer like that and you become a believer. Well, that's today's Monday Minute. Next week, we'll get more into God's plan of the ages. So uh, we'll see you next week. God bless.